Ladies and gentlemen, we'll begin in about two minutes. Uh, Mikey, can you go ahead and call the roll for me, please? And um, I really want to um, thank everyone for being here. I know that many of you had um, vacations that you put on hold or other appointments or meetings, um, but you thought it important enough to spend some time here with the Board of Governors. And I just want to say thank you for that. This is certainly um, a very different type of meeting for you, for our newest board members. Um, please know that it's not that we spend almost three days together for every board meeting. 
but, um, but we thought that it might be important that we at least kind of get started in this manner. And I think that it's going to pay us huge dividends in the long run. I think that our work moving forward will certainly go more smoothly because of the time investment that we're going to make um, for the next couple of days. Um, and what's interesting is that I know that part of the reason we wanted to do something like this is because we have so many new board members. It's such a, a huge uh, turnover for us to have at one time. But I think what's going to be interesting even for our older board members is that we're going to learn some things that we thought we already knew or find out some very interesting facts about our own university system. So I think that it is um, not only something that's going to be good for our, our new board members, but also for our veteran board members as well. Um, I know that throughout the next few days, we're going to have several of our university um, chairs of our board of trustees, um, university board of trustee chairs, as well as some of the, um, the board members for university boards of trustees. And I just want to um, acknowledge those of, the, those of you who are currently in the audience. What, I, what <coughs> I'll do is I'll wait until the end of the, of the day to acknowledge those who maybe have not been recognized uh, during the uh, individual presentations. But I just want to thank you. I did have an opportunity to speak with some of the board chairs um, throughout the week because I wanted to extend a very special thanks, not only for the time that you put in your own individual universities, but also for the extra time that you're willing to commit to um, allow the University Board of Governors to do its work. So just thank you so much. And I, from my conversations, what I've learned is that it's not just that our boards actually um, kind of relied only on our university presidents and our university administrations to prepare for, for this meeting, but I know our boards were actually actively engaged with the administration in order to ensure that the, um, the best foot was put forward on behalf of the university. And so I just want to thank so much, or thank the board so much, and particularly the leadership of the board chairs in preparation for this particular meeting. I know that we also have university presidents and administrations who are in attendance, and I want to thank you so much. I don't want to um, do anything individually at this point. I think that what's wonderful about the next couple of days is that everyone will have an opportunity to have their one hour in the sun with us. So um, I will not um, do any, in, any individual recognitions at this time. Um, I think that most of you have seen, um, particularly our board, this really thick book that was sent to us in preparation of this meeting. And please know that it's through the coordination of our wonderful chancellor and his staff that they were able to work with the universities to put this together to prepare us for the meeting. So I'd be remiss if I didn't just um, take a special minute to thank Chancellor Brogan and to thank his staff um, for first coming up with such a wonderful idea for us and coming up with the format and putting in the extra time for, to prepare for this meeting. So Dr. Brogan, thank you so much and, and your staff, those who are present, as well as those who, may, who are back in Tallahassee who work diligently on this process. Thank you so much for that commitment. And then certainly last but not least, I want to thank uh, President Hitt and the University of Central Florida for generously hosting the retreat. As each of the university presidents and your administrative staff will know that it's, um, um, when we come, we kind of come and take over. And uh, you all are always so generous to us and want to say just a special thanks to, uh, to President Hitt because this is an extended meeting. We are asking that you not only give us a, a nice, cool place, but that you give us um, um, also the administrative staff to support it, the technology to support the idea, as well as food for the next couple of days. So we want to say, um, say thank you so much for making that commitment to us. Um, before we begin our official business, I think it's important to have some discussion um, about what we hope to accomplish over the next few days. Um, I think that I'd like to begin by setting the stage and talk about where we are today as a system and where I hope that we will be able to go moving forward after we spend the next, um, the next three days together. Uh, the board has been developing a comprehensive strategic planning and accountability framework that will be key to fulfilling its constitutional responsibility. That constitutional responsibility has been clarified by the governance agreement that was signed by, uh, by the board the legislature and the governor earlier this year. And moreover, that agreement was further codified by significant statutory changes that were signed into law during the past legislative session. So there can be no doubt that the state of Florida is looking to the Board of Governors to lead our state university system into a new era of prominence. And what I say about that is that certainly we have a wonderful foundation, so we're just building on the positive foundation that we already have in place as a system. Now, we are committed to maximizing the state university system's capacity to help meet the state's needs and while growing the knowledge-based innovation sector of Florida's economy. 
And over the next few days, I look forward to hearing from each university regarding how their efforts will contribute to transforming our economy. Nobody needs to be told why the diversity of our economy is important to the future of Florida, because we're living that issue right now. In the months following the accident on the BP Deepwater Horizon, which has resulted in the massive oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico, we find ourselves in the midst of Florida's worst ecological and perhaps economic disaster ever. The short-term and long-term impact on the environment and the economy is yet to be fully known. However, we do know one thing. Our universities have an important and ongoing role in not only helping Florida to recover from this, cat this catastrophe, but also helping Florida transform its economy so that it is less susceptible to these kinds of events in the future. And as we work to create an environment that will foster this new Florida economy, we must be able to measure our success along the way. So toward that goal, we will work to align our system strategic planning, budgeting, and performance accountability processes. The planning and accountability system that we have been, we have been developing for quite some time now incorporates a multi-level approach that has within it certain timetables and cycles of data collection and analysis. Among the various tools of our, at our disposal for this effort are the State University System Strategic Plan, the Individual University Strategic Plan, multi-year university work plans, including performance targets and, that are updated annually, legislative budget requests aligned with institutional and system plans, and university annual reports. Because of the cyclical nature of these planning, budgeting, and accountability tools, tools, not to mention the cyclical nature of the legislative session, fiscal year, and academic calendar, we have had to rather stop the music and find a sensible starting point. So we began by gathering historic baseline data to provide a good foundation for moving forward. The 2009 annual report, which we all received earlier this year, is a result of this effort and provides an overview of the system's historical performance on a range of measures related to the Board of Governors' original strategic plan. As you recall, that strategic plan was created about five years ago, and I'm sure everyone will agree that much has changed since then, so it is time we revisit that plan again. But before we can undertake the process of updating our system strategic plan, we thought it was important for the board members to have an opportunity to hear from the presidents and trustees regarding their vision for their universities and how that fits into system-wide goals such as New Florida. We thought it would be helpful to build on the foundational knowledge provided by the 2009 annual report by using the first round of university work plans as a vehicle for these discussions. So over the next few days, you will hear from the leadership of each university as they share their work plans, which highlight each institution's unique personality and strengths and outlines a vision for the next five to 10 years. We'll also get to hear about and discuss, and discuss each university's more immediate priorities and how they plan to address those priorities. We will focus on how each institution can contribute to the accomplishment of system level goals that will help move the entire state forward. These work plans will help shape our strategic planning process in the coming year. By asking the universities to look further down the road, the board will be able to ensure that the university's priorities, especially those that find their way into the system's legislative budget requests, will align with the stated goals, initiatives, and financial assumptions that are outlined in university work plans. This will also help us as we work more closely with our colleagues in the Florida College System and with those in the nonprofit and, and proprietary colleges and universities across the state. In the coming year, as the board turns its attention to the SUS strategic plan, we will determine a process for reviewing and approving university strategic plans, allowing for a much more collaborative and consistent process. Once we put all these ingredients together, we will come out with an annual cycle of work plans, tuitions, and enrollment plans, um, legislative budget requests, and annual reports that all work in harmony with each other. What's more, they will align in an effort to address the state's higher education, research, and economic development needs. So what I'd like for you to think about as we are going through this process is that, yes, it's taken a lot of time and a lot of our commitment in order to get the information, but how else would we, um, what else better way is there to actually develop a system for our state other than actually taking at least an hour to learn more about what each university sees for itself now and in the future? 
So it's really important, and I just again want to thank you so much for the time that you've taken to do this. I think that with the data that we gather, and I'm sorry that we won't be able to really spend more than one hour because it's almost going to be impossible for each university to accurately share with us about their vision and their goals in that one 60-minute period. But I'm going to ask that if we stick within that time frame and that we, at the end of this uh, meeting, will actually have a framework of how our system will come together so we can better serve our, um, our students and our families in the state of Florida. You know, I've often said that I can't think of a better um, way to do community service than our service on the Board of Governors. We impact our families, we impact our students, we impact our economy. So I think that in order for us to do the best job at that, we need to put this kind of time commitment in. So with that, I know this is the longest that I promise I will ever talk in opening remarks for the rest of the year, but I thought it was important that since we we're going to be together for a long time, I have a, have a lot more to say. And I know that um, the Chancellor and I have worked it out, so it's not going to be a competition or anything. We're going to make sure <laughs> that um, he's going to go no longer than I just went. <laughs> but with that, um, please welcome me, um, welcome with me our Chancellor. And again, can we just give them a big round of applause and thank you for having me. Thank you very much, Chairwoman, um, and I make no such commitment regarding the timing of my remarks, but uh, thanks for giving it the old college try. I, I want to do a couple of things up front, and one, also thank the University of Central Florida. Uh, we'll talk more about the logistics of the meeting in just a moment, but you can see we've even put a, a special spin on the setup here today for specific reasons that I'll talk about and they have accommodated everything uh, that we've asked of them, and as they always do, but uh, the, certainly the setting of the meeting and, as the chairwoman mentioned, the support that they provide, everything from parking to security to all the wonderful people who have helped and will be helping with the logistics and the services, always greatly appreciated. We hope this will be not only an informative uh, few days together, but a very comfortable few days uh, that we will spend together. So thanks to President Hitt, his Board of Trustees, and all the great people at the University of Central Florida. I also wanted to thank uh, our staff. Um, it, it is important to know the, the amount of time and energy between the Board of Governors staff, the staff of each of our universities that has been contributed to what you will see play out over the course of the next couple of days. Uh, it's been remarkable, the amount of behind-the-scenes work that has gone into the development of all the great information that you've been provided, the creation of the presentations, uh, the preparation for our regularly scheduled meeting, which will take place, of course, on Friday, has been enormous. And I can't say enough about the combined efforts of our staff in Tallahassee and the staff of each of our universities around the state of Florida. I also want to thank the members of the Board of Governors for their time commitment. Uh, the Chairwoman is right. This is summertime. Uh, in, in most states, uh, it is difficult to find people surrounding higher education uh, because they're often doing lots of other things, including uh, much-needed vacations. Uh, some of our Board of Governors members, you should know, have either postponed vacations or, in some cases, have left vacations to join us here at the University of Central Florida for this period of time. And that includes not only Board of Governors members, but I know Board of Trustee members who will be with us over the course of the next few days as well. Your commitment continues to impress everyone, and we thank you very much for the time that you're going to be giving us. And we commit to you in return, I hope, a very profitable uh, two and a half days based on what we hope will be an informational return on that investment. And I think a, a platform upon which we'll build so much of our important activities yet to come. So thank you all for participating. Uh, I uh, had the opportunity uh, a couple of days ago to sit with the staff members of the Florida House and the Florida Senate just to update them on what we were about these days, especially in light of the closure of the regular session, uh, the budget, uh, and primarily we discussed the statutory rewrite. As you all know, the settlement agreement gave way to a significant body of statutory rewrite, which now better lays out with much greater clarity the responsibilities of the legislature and the Board of Governors and the Boards of Trustees. But along with that, as I reminded them, comes a great amount of responsibility. 
And I had the opportunity to talk to them about what we've been about since the close of session, talk to them about what we're going to do over this next two and a half days. And I assure you, they were deeply impressed, not only at the fact that we were doing this, but doing it as a way to better organize ourselves as a system to assure that the legislature would have, from their standpoint, a much clearer picture of what we were about now and what we were proposing in the future. And I uh, told them that while we still have much to do, the energy that I think is now uh, being created in our state university system is very exciting to be a part of. And that everyone has uh, a renewed spirit after several difficult years economically uh, that even though times are still not economically great, uh, it, it is an exciting point in time for our university, I think, uh, to move into the future together. I wanted to uh, take the opportunity to tell you a little bit about what we're going to do over the course of the next couple of days, two and a half actually. Uh, for those of you who joined us on the conference call with the presidents and then the BOT chairs, I apologize for the redundancy, but this is a good chance to get everybody on the same page as we head through what's going to be a large amount of activity, but I hope you'll agree when it's completed a very important two and a half days. Uh, the, the chairwoman and I discussed um, the concept of a retreat-like atmosphere, that yes, we needed to take care of our normal course of business, our committee meetings and then our uh, regularly scheduled agenda, and we're going to be doing that on um, Friday. But we also have a responsibility of significance in this process, and that is for the first time in a, in a significant way to take up the issue of differential tuition. As all of you are uh, by this time aware, there is a requirement in statute that now creates a partnership between the boards of trustees and the board of governors in the review of and the ultimate approval of the differential tuition. That is the amount of tuition uh, that a, a university is recommending be put in place beyond the base tuition set by the Florida legislature. In this case, 8% base set by the legislative process this year. So a part of what we knew we had to do that was going to uh, go beyond the traditional meetings that we have is for the first time in a significant way discuss that differential tuition. Uh, consider how it's been spent in the past, what's being proposed by each university going forward and how that would propose to be spent. What sort of metrics we'd be looking to as return on investment for the uh, investment being made by the universities in that differential tuition and, and those kinds of conversations. That expanded our regular agenda significantly. But we also believed and came up with a concept that we really believed there was an opportunity here to expand our agenda even more. And that gave way to the idea of the 11 presentations. I want to assure you the intent was never just 11 presentations for dog and pony purposes, as the chairwoman mentioned, and I just came from a university, Florida Atlantic University could keep you for a week telling you about FAU, what they do and what they hope to do in the future. But we knew that we had to do this in a way that would provide some time and yet be sensitive to the incredible amount of time that it would take to hear from each university who they are, what their personality is, and very importantly, what they're uh, proposing to become in the future, but also do it in a way that was fairly consistent. Make certain that indeed, while not identical, because no two of our universities are identical, that the Board of Governors could hear a presentation that they knew would be consistent one university to another. So we began to work with the universities in putting together this two and a half days. We created, created the agenda. We began to work on common template that would be applied to each of the university's presentations. We began to better refine the process for consideration of the differential tuition issue and what uh, you have before you by way of agenda for the next two and a half days is reflected, uh, reflective of that volume of work. Each university beginning today, and we actually drew out of a hat, so there was no um, scientific methodology used for determining who would go first, who would go last, or who would end up in the middle. It was uh, literally either the luck of the draw or fate uh, that uh, drew for us those 11 
uh, uh, agendaed universities. But each university will be bringing before you today uh, their presentation, utilizing the common template. So you can expect that Florida State University's presentation will be similar, not identical to, not at all, but similar to the uh, presentations that will be made over the course of Wednesday and all of Thursday. That will give you a general idea uh, that you can look for commonalities in the presentations. We're going to use a great deal of the accountability system that the chairwoman alluded to. The, the metrics uh, will appear regularly throughout, uh, whether it's uh, dashboard indicators or whether it happens to be uh, much deeper information from the annual report. But the work plan information that you see reflected in this giant body of work in this notebook is also and has been made available to everyone involved in this process so that people can actually dive down deep, as deep as they want to go into each of the universities in terms of their, uh, their accountability, their aspirations, and uh, even those aspirations that hinge on dreams and visions and really begin to pull together a body of work collectively that can ultimately contribute to better organizing our system of 11 wonderful universities. The presentations will then give way and dovetail into uh, the differential tuition issues. So after having gotten a good overview of the university, who they are, what they would like to be, uh, each university will make uh, their presentation on their differential tuition. That will be a part of each hour set aside. Obviously, and very importantly, we will also have time for questions and answers. But as I've continued to tell people um, what we are in this program, here is what we are not. We are just simply not, as you might imagine, in a one-hour period of time with presentation and discussion of differential tuition, in a position to dive down deep into issues surrounding each of the individual universities, or for that matter, our system. That does not mean uh, that there should not be questions. As long as people understand that the amount of time we'll be able to spend on each question or concern or issue raised is going to be limited. Uh, our chairwoman was given the opportunity to uh, defer to me to become the ringmaster of that process and try to use uh, uh, that as a, as a way to hold people at bay. She chose to pick up the gauntlet and carry that mantle of responsibility herself. Uh, she has a rather velvet-gloved approach, as you all know, and I think she'll do great in that regard. You also notice next to Mikey, uh, we've got some uh, uh, high-quality placards that we've created uh, for that one-hour time, so those at the front table and those uh, around the table will actually be able to see how that one hour is parsing out and see how much time is remaining. But I commit this to you that no matter the question, the concern, or the issue raised, they will all be logged. We will be keeping track very carefully of any questions, any issues, any concerns, and that once we break, we will, as staff, go back and put those together in an orchestrated fashion so that the people on the Finance Committee will be able to see these were the issues raised for the Finance Committee to make sure we take them up over the course of the year to come. The people on the facilities committee or the people on the, uh, the audit committee will keep track of every issue raised and we commit to you that those issues will get a fair review before we are complete. We really believe, and I continue to use the example of enrollment just for uh, sake of having an example, that it would be easy to spend an entire meeting on just the issue of enrollment and enrollment growth. We know we can't do that, but we know how important it is. So as the universities discuss their enrollments, where they are, where they hope to go, we know already that that is a major issue that the Board of Governors is going to have to get its arms around moving forward because it's a system issue just every bit as much as it is an institution issue and you can probably think of a hundred other examples. So we will capture all of that information, log it, uh, organize it, and then work with our chair to make sure that it finds an appropriate place in the pipeline of further discussion as we go. But that's one of the beauties of this workshop and retreat, and that's one of the beauties of these presentations. 
many of those major issues with which we're going to have to deal over time should come as a result of hearing these presentations. These should spur great dialogue over time by helping us to catalog, catalog the major issues with which we're going to have to deal as a state university system. So I commit that uh, nothing will be left off the table, but I do commit to you that we're going to have to keep people on task because that one hour will go at an incredibly rapid rate, no matter what anybody thinks of an hour. Once people get into the meat of their presentation, the discussion surrounding differential tuition, and then the obvious questions and answers. So that'll take us through today and all of tomorrow. Uh, come Friday then, we will begin the morning with the uh, traditional uh, committee meetings. One of those committees will be finance. Finance has already met telephonically to take up consideration of this entire agenda, and they know that differential tuition is a major issue with which they're going to have to deal. So just to lay it out for you, on Friday morning, uh, because no action will be asked to be taken during the two days of presentation on differential tuition, that's a time for conversation and presentation. On Friday morning, the Finance Committee will actually take up each of the recommendations uh, approved by the local boards of trustees for that differential tuition for further discussion and dialogue. And then at the end of their consideration, one of a couple of things will happen. They will either recommend a university's differential tuition forward to the full board for the full agenda meeting later that day for approval, or as is laid out in the statute, uh, they may either seek additional information before making a final recommendation forward, or if it were to be the case, take issue with the uh, amount of differential being recommended and have to deal further with the university during what is now a prescribed 10-day appeal process window. We have already set up a telephonic conference call 10 days out. Uh, that will be uh, a meeting then of the appeals committee. The appeals committee is made up of the chairperson of the Board of Governors and each of the respective chairs of the committees of the Board of Governors. And that's the way it's laid out. So during that 10 days, should it be necessary, I'm not suggesting it would be, but if it is, then that university and that committee, using uh, our staff as the interlocutor, would take up the issue of their differ dif differential request before the final action would be taken 10 days out. So uh, I wanted to give you an overview of how the differential process is to unfold over the next two and a half days, uh, and then 10 days out should that be necessary for any uh, of the universities. And there'll be plenty of time during that 10 days for lots of dialogue should it be necessary or additional information gathering if that becomes the case. And working with that appeals committee then to the final 10-day uh, window uh, and the telephonic uh, conference call. So that gives you a general overview. Obviously, your agenda directs you to break time, lunch time. Uh, we're going to hear um, on uh, uh, Friday uh, from our uh, uh, chairs of the committees relative to their work plans for their individual committees as we have lunch together as a group. And that will give you a chance to hear from each of our committee chairs as to what their plans are going to look like over the course of the next year. And some of that I would submit will be somewhat fluid based on the fact that some of these presentations and some of those dialogues may actually see some of those work plans change over the course of the next year if that becomes necessary. And that's very appropriate. All of that having been said, uh, we have much to do and uh, two and a half days in which to do it. Uh, we hope that the agenda we put forward will be efficiently utilized by everyone. And again, uh, especially to the members of our Board of Governors, um, the velvet glove uh, will be uh, utilized to make sure we do stay within that 60 minute window, uh, which starts in just about nine minutes. Uh, to assure that we can get through all 11 of these presentations in a very efficient and a very effective manner. But I want to end where I started by thanking the chair for uh, being the impetus behind this format. I, it is different, and thank the University of Central Florida. One last piece of housekeeping, 
The table is different this time. Uh, typically, we have our presidents and our uh, uh, occasional visiting board of trustee chair join us at the table because of the volume of persons involved in each university's presentation. We knew that would be impossible. But we also didn't want to, to create an interrogation format. So as you can see, we've set up the room a little differently. We've done it UN style. We've created uh, table settings for uh, each of our universities so that they could sit together, not only um, uh, so that they could kibitz everyone else's presentation, knowing theirs will be infinitely better than anyone who precedes them, uh, but also take the chance to make fun of everyone else's presentation as they, as they go through that process. But we did want to make sure, because here, here's the thing. This is an opportunity to literally introduce each of our 11 universities to the new members of our Board of Governors, and we have six. Most uh, uh, new, uh, the newest of all, I wanted to welcome uh, Gallup Franklin from Florida A&M University, who is our brand new student representative to the Board of Governors, uh, and let him know, of course, he's got big shoes to fill, but I've spent time around Governor Franklin over the last year, and I can assure you, he is up to the challenge. Uh, this young man is an outstanding student, he is uh, an outstanding representative to the FAMU Board of Trustees. He is obviously the elected representative of the Florida Student Association and a seated member of the Board of Governors. And uh, I guess it's official, is also a Governor's Fellow, newly named. And it will spend the next year actually working for one of the Governor's agencies. Uh, and by the way, as a student um, in all of that in his spare time, He's a remarkable young man, and he will serve, I think, the state university system very, very well in that regard. But both uh, Gallup and all of our new members will have the opportunity for an introduction to these work plan presentations. But I also build this as a chance to reintroduce our 11 universities to our existing and veteran members of the Board of Governors in an organized fashion. But I've also said, and I said it on the conference calls the other day, this is also actually a chance to reintroduce each of our universities to each of our universities, recognizing we can't go forward as an organized system if each of us don't understand what each other are about. And so it's a remarkable chance that we have to do those things. So Madam Chair, I thank you, and uh, thank you again for generating so much of the impetus behind what should be a fairly remarkable two and a half days. You recognize that um, there were some of my red signs that were over here that Frank ignored. <laughs> I want to make sure. <laughs> I want to make sure <laughs> that this is not the start of the rest of the afternoon. It was executive right. privilege. <laughs> but um, thank you very much for your for your kindness. So you're not going to go through the slides then? Yeah, I was going to kind of dovetail that into a very quick overview because okay. you all have this in, in your information. You're going to see institution uh, information coming up here in just a moment, but I wanted to throw up on the screen, and again, you've all got this in your backup information. This is some of the system-wide data uh, that is very important to this conversation because, again, this is not only about what each institution does, this is about how then the system looks and aspires uh, in the future. So on that first particular slide, there is some general demographic information on a system side on our, uh, uh, on our universities. It shows you the category classification through Carnegie that each of our universities holds from research university to arts and science focus. Uh, it shows you the demographic breakout of our 302,000 students, still one of the largest state university systems uh, in America today. The number of baccalaureates on a system side, masters and specialists, uh, research doctorates, professional doctorates. It also shows you the number of tenure and tenure track faculty and non-tenure track faculty, just for comparison purposes on a system-wide side. Baccalaureate degrees awarded, over 55,000 baccalaureate degrees. Graduate degrees, uh, over 16,000 masters and uh, over 4,000 research and professional doctorates. Baccalaureate degrees awarded by group. And here a special note. You will notice uh, we're also asking in our accountability system 
that universities not only in their work plans tell us where they are, but where they aspire to be. So we've begun to incorporate, and I really commend the universities for stepping up to the plate on this one, we've begun to incorporate targets on many of the metrics that we've created in our accountability system that they will then incorporate or have into their own strategic plans. We'll incorporate those into our system-wide strategic plans as well. The next slide uh, gives you a fast overview. and These are the dashboard indicators I'm referring to that you've heard talked about to a great degree uh, of baccalaureate degrees awarded in select areas of strategic emphasis. You see the STEM-related baccalaureates, health professions, and education. And you see those then uh, broken down uh, into uh, the different categories of master's degrees and doctorates on the graduate side. Academic research and development expenditures, you can see that categori categorization, especially 2007-2008. Uh, uh, that is the, uh, uh, the federal side. And you also see, or the total side, and you, uh, of expenditures. And then you also see licenses and licensing revenue. And that was a metric that was created especially in tandem uh, with the members of the House and Senate who wanted to see that sort of, uh, of uh, indicator located within our accountability measures. And so we've been working to refine that one over time. I should go back to uh, that one and say that above it you see pass rates on licensure exams. That one right now is a bit vague. We obviously have passage rates on some of the licensure examinations, which is a, a reasonable indicator. We see how many people pass the bar and how many people pass their license, license exa licensing exam in pharmacy, et cetera. But we're still working to flush that one out and make sure that it is of high quality. This is another one that the House and Senate uh, representatives and staff wanted to see incorporated into our uh, metric analysis on an annual basis. The next slide shows you undergraduate retention and graduation rates and every president will tell you that is a meat and potatoes uh, issue. The retention rates and graduation rates. You all can understand that if we were um, if we continue to increase our success rate on the issue of retention not only is that a huge impact on the students that we wouldn't lose but it's an enormous fiscal impact in a positive way to our universities. It is the double whammy, not only the student that you lose and the money that was spent on that student, but the money you have to then reinvest in the student who takes their place. And so each university is working very hard on those six-year rates for the uh, first time in college students that you see reflected there, but also on making sure that we keep more of the uh, transfer students that come from our uh, community colleges, colleges, and state colleges, as well as what we call other transfers. Those are students who transfer in from other universities, other college around the state, uh, around the country, and around the world. Uh, the more of those students that we can keep in the pipeline, the better for the student, the better for the system. And of course, we have on the other side of that student to faculty ratios, and those are uh, generally speaking uh, full-time and some part-time faculty counts that you see there. Uh, you see we've stayed relatively flat, 207, 208, and to 208 and 209. Uh, that is fairly remarkable if you stop and consider uh, the economic impact uh, to issues of class size that we've faced uh, with the declining economy over the last several years. That's a big area of interest for all of us, and that includes uh, House and Senate. Then you see the appropriated funding per actual student FTE, and you see the numbers reflective there of, uh, of lottery funding, student fees, general revenue, trust funds. Uh, those are some very important indicators, and you see the variance there, and again, large measure, some of that is relative to the state of the economy over the last several years. And then quickly, there is uh, the last slide, and that is the one that uh, demonstrates, I think, some very important information. There uh, still exists today, I think, uh, a general belief on the part of some that almost exclusively uh, we are an, a creature of the social sciences. Um, and while the social sciences are an incredibly important part of what we are and who we are, uh, the arts, the fine arts, uh, 
the, 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 the misconception that that is generally the lion's share of what we do really isn't true. So you can see an indicator here that shows you by university the largest number of degrees granted by institution uh, fall in areas of business, education and health profession, etc. And this, at some point you ought to take a much closer look at this and we can actually dissect this and should over the course of the next year because I think it's a demonstration uh, that we do hit STEM issues, that we do hit hard those professional uh, stereotypical degrees that go along with the world of work. But it is not uh, a suggestion that we don't do the social science as well and that we aren't engaged in the arts and culture. We very much are. And that's a well-rounded part of who we are and what we are. It is about finding a great balance in our state university system. So those give you some highlights. Again, all this information is found in your backup material and I really recommend that you, uh, that as time elapses, you take time to go through that information and familiarize yourself as much with the system information as with the individual university information. Thanks, Madam Chair. Thank you very much.